So it's 2023, and if you're watching this video, you probably train for strength. If not for strength, maybe hypertrophy as well. And a lot of people tend to set these types of goals in their training regime where they put a due date. For example, by the end of the year, I want to dip 130 kilos. That is putting a time frame on your goal. And in my opinion, this is really stupid for two main reasons. The first reason is that these goals tend to be unrealistic. A lot of people who expect to hit a certain number, a certain weight, or a certain amount of reps by a certain time frame usually don't understand how training works because it's not just simply adding weight and you suddenly get stronger. Unfortunately, we actually don't decide when we'll get stronger. Only our body does. Because if we decided when we'll get stronger, we would just linearly progress every single day. But eventually we come to a halt where suddenly linear progression doesn't work anymore. Adding more weight doesn't work anymore. And so we have to consider other factors at hand, such as RPE, such as volume, such as accessories. All these different things are factors that contribute to getting stronger than just simply adding more weight to the main movement. And a lot of people don't understand that. And when a lot of people don't understand that, these types of goals tend to be unrealistic. Another thing about unrealistic goals is that people who actually do set them tend to quit first. And I see this a lot. And it doesn't even just apply to strength training. It applies to just regular New Year's resolutions goals, which is why I hate them so much. People want to get into the gym more this year. They want to become a slimmer shape. They want to lose weight, gain weight, whatever it is. And so they hit the gym and the first two weeks are there. But after that, you never see them again. Why is that? Because they set the standards so high. They expect everything to be smooth. Sailing. They don't understand the struggle and they're not looking at the little details. A lot of the little details actually matters and people just think that, oh yeah, if I just train to failure, three sets of training to failure, suddenly I'll get the body I've always wanted. Why do people set these kinds of goals? I don't exactly no, but I know for one thing, I think social media has caused a lot of impatience in people wanting results. People want results now, they want it quick, and what tends to facilitate that impatience is social media. Even on YouTube, channels like Lifting Vault and Lifters Club tend to highlight all of the best lifts, and when people constantly see these lifts, they tend to think, that's a normal thing, and even I do this. The only reason I show it is because it's not normal and it's actually an amazing feat and it took a lot of hard work and sacrifice. I understand the amount of people that I put on, you know, my motivational videos, all those people have worked extremely hard for that kind of strength and it's no different with anyone else, including you. Try to set more realistic goals and if anything, I wouldn't even set a goal if I'm being really honest. I mean, of course, there's a general direction you want to head towards. Of course, we want to all get stronger. We want to all look bigger. But to set a time frame on it makes it seem like we are ignoring so many other factors. And this is another reason why I don't like these types of goals. This is my second reason. The second reason I don't like these kinds of goals is because the program that you're formulating your goal around tends to be rushed meaning and i said this earlier people will abuse linear progression and people tend to abuse this linear progression to the point where they will get very close if not really badly injured and this is even worse than just simply doing smart programming you will set yourself back months many months maybe even years. There's a lot of things that come with injuries that are just simply not worth it if you just took the time and the patience to sit down and truly think about the process of getting stronger and how it really works. You know, especially if you're trying to program smart, one of the best pieces of advice I could give you as far as programming is to always have some sort of repercussion within your training plan when things don't go the way they should. And Nine out of 10 times, they usually don't go the way they should. That's why in my last video about my program that I followed, I gave you guys six different modifications you could add in case things don't go the way they should. And those six things have helped me progress more so than the actual program itself. That's what's going to keep you in this game the longest for sure is 
understanding and falling back on your repercussions. So overall, I think goals are definitely nice to set. I think heading into a general direction is always a good thing. Understanding where you want to end up in is a good thing, but putting a due date on it, putting a time frame as if it's some kind of a project is a big mistake in my opinion. And I really think the best way to train is really not to focus on the end results, but rather the process. And I find a lot of enjoyment out of that. And I think, you know, a lot of people who have been in the game the longest really find joy in learning how strength training really works. So overall, if you guys found any of my advice helpful, I would appreciate it if you like and subscribe to my channel, and I will see you all in the next one. Happy New Year, and thanks for watching.